A handful of times in Revenge of the Sith and the Clone Wars series, we got to see the Coruscant Guard. Today we'll talk about what set them apart from other clone troopers in terms of their training, responsibilities, and more. The Coruscant Guard was made up of elite clone shock troopers. They were secretly bred on Coruscant, completely apart from their brothers on Kamino. They were trained for riot control and close quarters combat in urban environments since they served primarily as a police force on their homeworld. As they were introduced into service, their main job was protecting government buildings and other vital infrastructure. They were said to be supplemental to the Coruscant Security Force and Senate Guard, but they slowly took on more and more duties. They patrolled the streets, guarded Republic prisons, escorted Jedi and Senators on diplomatic missions, and more. As the Senate Guard was proven to be corrupt thanks to the actions of individuals like Captain Argaius, the entire group was phased out in favor of these specialized clones. The guards were equipped with weapons usually reserved for actual military units like the DC-15A blaster rifle, DC-15S rifles, thermal detonators, and DC-17 pistols. When sent on escort missions, they had even more equipment at their disposal, including rocket launchers and Z-6 rotary blaster cannons. Thankfully, riot troopers were given non-lethal weapons, including shields and stun batons, but as the time of the Empire grew ever closer, their weapons became more extreme, including the R-88 suppressor riot rifle. Inspector Tan Devo noted that law enforcement messaging also began changing as the Clone Wars continued and the Coruscant Guard grew more prevalent. Citizens heard less and less about community service, and more about military might as a means for security. Just as Chancellor Palpatine used the Clone Wars as a front to gain more and more power for himself, the red-armored Coruscant Guard was his way of ensuring he would have a loyal and strong-handed police force during the transition from Republic to Empire. Although they began to be composed of stormtroopers rather than clones, the purpose of their organization changed very little, and in fact their authority was expanded for additional security. They were famously led by CC-1010, Commander Fox. He was known to be fiercely loyal to Palpatine, the Republic, and eventually the Empire, becoming one of the most decorated commanders during the war. Shortly after the end of the conflict, he took part in the attempt to capture surviving Jedi Jocasta Nu, but when his men mistakenly opened fire on Darth Vader, the Sith Lord broke the commander's neck. But that's everything we currently know about the Coruscant Guard and canon, and it feels like there's room to learn more about specialized clones that were secretly created on Coruscant and not Kamino. What else could the Emperor have been cloning? Only time will tell if there's any more story at all. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.